Good morning. My report is BlueFi, physically across technology communication blue, from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi. My name is Yong Rui Chen. I'm from University of Chinese Academy of Sciences. My report is composed of five parts. Firstly, introduction. Recent years, we have witnessed explosive growth of wireless devices with heterogeneous technologies, including Wi-Fi, ZigBee, Bluetooth, and LoRaWAN, etc., which urgently calls for ubiquitous connections of these tremendous devices into Internet of Things. To bridge these heterogeneous devices, deploying multi-radio gateways is a common solution. However, this solution faces several limitations, such as extra hardware and deployment cost, traffic overhead in and out the gateway, and the inconvenience for ad hoc and mobile networks. Recent advances on cross-technology communication, CTC for short, enable direct communications among heterogeneous, heterogeneous technologies, which will bring about many advantages, such as removing gateway overhead, exploring <coughs> potential of cross-technology collaboration, and reducing cross-technology interference. The existing CTC works can be classified into two types, packet-level CTC and physical-level CTC. Packet-level CTC leverages packet-level information, such as frame gap, gap duration, and beacon interval to convey messages across heterogeneous technologies. However, packet-level CTC typically suffer from low throughput and long transmission delay, making it unsuitable for many IoT applications. On the other hand, the newly emerging physical layer CTC exploits physical layer information to achieve high-speed direct communication across heterogeneous devices. Signal processing techniques are developed in physical layer CTCs, such as signal emulation, cross-technology decoding, and cross-technology observation. With these signal-level message delivering techniques, physical layer CTC reaches much higher data rate and a lower transmission delay without hardware modifications on commodity devices. Among all wireless technologies, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are two of the most widely used technologies in our daily life. However, state-of-the-art CTCs from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi are still packed-level CTCs, which severely restrict their application prospects by their low speed. To bridge this gap, we propose BlueFi, the first physical layer CTC from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi, which can be applied in many scenarios, such as IoT data reporting, streaming, and energy saving of, of Wi-Fi network card. Secondly, basic design. In a nutshell, a BLE device transmits a frame with selected payload to generate a series of specific time domain waveforms. At a Wi-Fi receiver, these waveforms are detected by the Wi-Fi spectrum analyzer as some pulses in the frequency domain. When these specific pulses are identified, they can be decoded as information bits. Specifically, a BOE radio uses Gaussian frequency shift keying, GFS, GFSK for short, to modulate its frames. So, if BOE bits are continuously 1 or 0, the waveform of the baseband signal will be a sine wave with a single term. If we input four identical BLE bits, 0B1111 or 0B0000, the baseband signal will be a sine wave 
lasting for four microseconds, which will be recognized as a specific Wi-Fi symbol, that is, left power, left turn or right turn, as a Wi-Fi device when it operates on spectral analysis mode. In practice, many advanced Wi-Fi chipsets, for example, AR92XX and AR93XX, include a built-in spectral analysis feature. As this spectral analysis mode, the Wi-Fi radio will transform the received baseband signal from time domain samples into frequency domain components and then report the FFT results to the upper layer. As shown in the figure, the Wi-Fi set carrier, which is the closest to the BLE term, will have the largest mag magnitude among all subcarriers. Therefore, given a BLE channel, we can observe a left pulse and a right pulse cor corresponding to BLE symbol 0000 and 1111 at the Wi-Fi receiver. Then, the location of the strongest subcarrier will be decoded as information bits. To implement, <coughs> to implement Blue Fi into a real system, we still need to address several practical addresses, uh, practical issues. The first challenge is the lack of symbol level synchronization between the transmitter and the, and the receiver. Therefore, the symbol timing offset will inevitably introduce inter-symbol interference, ISI for short. To eliminate ISI, we transmit every blue phi symbol twice at the sender. As a receiver, we observe these two consecutive symbols and we'll find that one of them is not affected by the ISI. This intact symbol will be chosen for reliable de demodulation. The second challenge is how to reliably decode a blue fiber frame under interference. To ensure robust reception, we first design the structure of a blue phi frame consisting of preamble, SFD, sync byte, length, and payload. And then we design the corresponding blue phi frame decoder. Another major challenge is that BLE adopts adaptive frequency copying. To deal with this problem, we design a BLE compatible MAC protocol which establishes a connection between BLE and Wi-Fi at the beginning. Once the connection is established, the Wi-Fi device will know the BLE hopping sequence and then keep tracking on its channel in advance to keep the, blue, uh, to keep the BLE channel within the Wi-Fi band. Finally, for the intercarrier interference, ICI for short, between different BLE devices at different BLE channels. We demonstrate that the ICI is small enough, so as Wi-Fi is wideband, BlueFi is able to provide parallel communications from multiple BLE devices to a Wi-Fi device. The experimental verification will be explained as follows. We implement BlueFi on a USRP platform with IEEE A02.11G phi physical, physical layer and commodity BLE radios. The default transmission power are all fixed as 0 dBm. We first compare the throughput of BlueFi with other two state-of-art CTCs from BLE to Wi-Fi in the same setting. As a physical layer CTC, the throughput of BlueFi greatly outperforms the two packet level CTCs, that is over 38 times higher than B2W2 and over 
6,800 times higher than free B. Moreover, blue phi is able to provide nine links in parallel, leading to the total throughput of more than one million BPF, BPS. We then test the reliability of blue phi in a room site. The results show that blue phi achieves a more than 95% frame reception rate, FRR, from BLE to Wi-Fi. We also evaluate the, perform the performance of blue phi at an outdoor site. The results show that blue phi achieves a good reliability, FRR, larger than 83%, even the distance reaches to 100 meters. It is shown that blue phi can achieve three times longer distance than native BOE. We then evaluated, evaluate the symbol error rate, SER for short, under different distances at room site. The results show that blue phi reaches less than 1% SER. In the right figure, we can see that the, that the magnitudes of different FFT binds are quite different for different blue phi symbols. Therefore, it is reliable enough to demodulate blue phi symbols. We also evaluate the reliability of simultaneous blue phi communications on different channels. The experimental results show that blue phi is able to support multiple parallel links with high reliability. We further evaluate blue phi with a mobile BLE sender. Six levels of movements are evaluated in the experiment. This figure shows that blue phi is able to work well under different levels of mobilities. Finally, we conclude our paper. We present blue phi the first work that achieves physical layer CTC from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi. By leveraging both signal manipulation at BLE sender and the spectral analysis at Wi-Fi receiver, BlueFi enables high throughput and reliable data transmissions from BLE to Wi-Fi. Experiment results show that BlueFi can also work well under long distance and mobile scenarios and can support nine parallel links with more than one million BPS death rate altogether. That's all. Thank you.